Hello everyone, I'm Alfonso Larrota. I'm, I'm a research engineer here at Protocol Labs in the ResNet lab. And today I just wanted to share an exciting project we are running within the ResNet lab, where we are trying to drive up speed, to drive speed ups in file sharing peer-to-peer -peer networks. And of course, in trying to find these speed ups, we started with IPFS. Um, so when we started, the first thing we did was to do a state-of-the-art evaluation like any other researchers to try and find ways in which we could improve file sharing. But we realized something, that we didn't have a way of testing our ideas. So of course we had an infrastructure with a lot of IPFS nodes, we could try things locally, but we didn't have a way of comparing the baseline with the ideas that we were generating and that we were prototyping. So the first thing that we did was to build a testbed to try file sharing uh, and a testbed that made easy uh, implementing new prototypes of, of file sharing protocols and evaluating their performance. So if you want to try it, it's here in this repo, you will find like a probe and a testbed. The testbed is the actual uh, test round. Uh, I don't know if, if you know test round, but it's an awesome uh, project uh, within protocol, protocol labs to test peer-to-peer -peer protocols in a really easy way. And here you will find all the plans that we are using to evaluate all of our prototypes. And also you will see a Python notebook dashboard that actually I think I have it here so that you can run different um, tests over the test ground test bed and start playing with your file sharing um, implementations over IPFS. So within the project, how we, we focus our methodology is in the following way. We first, uh, if we come up with an idea, we first write an RFC so that we open the idea uh, to discussion and, and, and we can like have a chat with different people to see if the idea makes sense. And once we feel comfortable with this idea, what we feel is a, a prototype and then a proper test evaluation of, over our testbed. And today what I want to share is some of the, of the things we've been prototyping so far and the results that we've reached. If this is a work in progress. And the reason why I'm talking here today is to invite you all to, to share your feedback or collaborate in any way. I mean, if you join like here, you can find all our contributions and all of our work around this Beyond Bitswap project. You can find why we're calling it Beyond Bitswap. Um, and if you, you'd see the RFCs, and if you want to jump in into the discussions, you want to propose anything, or you want to propose a collaboration, go to these issues and open an issue, and we can start discussion and see how we can onboard you into the, the project. Um, but let's jump into the RFCs that we have prototyped so far. Uh, as I said, we started, I mean, our aim is to try and, and improve file sharing in P2P networks in general, but we've started, of course, with IPFS, and by starting with IPFS, we are starting trying to improve to improve uh, Bitswap, that is the exchange submodule in IPFS. And the first thing that we realized is that whenever you want content um, uh, and you want to get some content from the network, what your node does is say Bitswap, hey, I want to find this CID. And it sent a one message, a request to your connected peers saying, I want this specific content. And if your peers, your connected peers doesn't have it, you resort to the DHT to try and find the guy that is storing that CID, that bug, or, or that content. So we realized that Bitstrap was not using um, information from its surroundings to, to try and, and make more efficient that lookup. So what we did is a first prototype in which we made some Bitstrap nodes that uh, they listened to every request coming from their connected peers and from the network and keep a registry so that the next time they want to find a specific CID, they would go, I mean, they would check if someone had asked the, for that CID before in our surroundings, because potentially then they will have the content and we would directly request the content from them. In this way, um, speeding up the discovery of popular content. Because if someone around me has asked for that content, I don't need to flood the network with a request of, hey guys, I want this content. I can go directly to the guy that I know that have requested it before. We did with the testbed a few preliminary tests to see how this worked. And the test plan that we designed for this was 
a wave soft. So we had, for instance, one seeder, one IPFS node providing content, a specific content, and then leachers came in waves requesting this content. In the baseline bit swap, you see here in the left, you see that the more, so subsequent waves become, subsequent leachers of the waves become seeders. So that's why we see that the, the subsequent waves have a lower time to fetch because they have easier, an easier way of finding the content. But what is cool to see is how when we are using popular content and we are inspecting what messages, we can reduce a lot the time to discover CIDs and to discover who has the content, reducing the time to discovery of Bitswap. So this was the first RFC that we prototyped and the conclusion, of course, this is not a perfect implementation. It probably needs a lot of iteration, but the conclusion we had from here is that we can improve uh, file sharing by getting information uh, from the protocol or from other protocols that we are not using right now to discover the content. Then um, we said HTTP uses compression. Why couldn't we use compression to make file share, um, to make exchange in a peer-to-peer -peer network? So again, in the scope of Bitswap, we tried different strategies to see which one led to better results. We tried a block compression strategy in which Bitswap compressed every block to try and drive some speed ups. Wasn't that good. Then we tried a full compression strategy in which every single Bitswap message was, was compressed. It wasn't that good either. And then we tried strip compression and we said, why trying to uh, compress messages that in order to send them through the leap peer-to-peer uh, transport, we need to know the size beforehand. And we wrap the, the leap peer-to-peer -peer stream into a compressor, the same way that we do in, in uh, JZIP handler in HTTP. And so that every byte that leaves the, the bit substream is compressed. And here is where we found something. And actually what we realized is that the, this implementation, it wasn't uh, a protocol level compression, but a transport level compression. And after some tests in our testbed, we say, hey, it was our aha moment. And we realized that maybe if we added compression to leap peer to peer, not only Bitswap could benefit from it, but every single protocol application uh, building on top of, of IPFS could potentially benefit from using uh, compression. So we spent some time trying to figure out where it made sense to, to put compression in the leap to peer stack. And we did a first prototype that we finished last week uh, where we added compression after the muxer so that every the, the stream of bytes coming from every single protocol stream is can be compressed, potentially compressed and sent through the transport. We are right now running the tests in the test with different data sets and hopefully in a few days we will be able to give some more compelling uh, results but if you want to start playing with compression and and would you want even to implement your own compressor uh, this is a non-breaking change because we implemented compression inside the transport upgrader also and you can this is the entry point if you want to start playing with compression on leafy peer Again, this is a prototype, probably it needs a lot of iteration and feedback, but that's why we're doing this talk to invite you all to give us all the feedback. And finally, the, another one that we are implementing right now, just to give you a grasp of what is in the open right now, is um, so we realize that we need more information to make more efficient discoveries of content through additional like one messages, for instance, but we can also try and improve the scope that we're having right now to find the content. Because right now, Bitswap sends branch messages directly only to its connected peers. And by adding TTLs to, to requests for content, we can maybe jump one, um, one node further and find the CID without, without having to resort to the DHT. So this is what we're trying right now. We, are, we have a first implementation that, is, uh, that can be improved, but we've seen similar behaviors in our initial tests to the ones that we are seeing with the one message RFC. But again, you are more than welcome to help us with this and trying to play with file sharing in IPFS. I don't want to spend more time because we have exciting talks. Thank you very much for having me. And again, reach me out for some feedback, some discussions or whatever you need.